Okay, so the next step is going to be doing some texture on your material. So, as specified in the brief, you need to draw part of your stationary storage project to look like it's made of wood. So what I've done here is I've got to chop down a piece of uh, wood so you can actually see it across the top. And if we just have a quick look at the end of it, so this has come straight from the end of it. But if we look on the end, you can start to see where we've got the curves in the wood. So running around, so this is the end grain, so the tree would have actually been growing upwards towards you, and if we actually had the full piece of wood that I cut this from, it would have the growth rings running around the circles within there. So, what we're going to do is effectively start off with the growth rings on this end down here. And then we're going to work down the material and draw on what we would see from the side view. So, if we're looking at how that looks on there, we're going to basically match it across so we can pop on some growth rings. Again, I'm sort of I'm using a pen here so you can see it a little bit easier. I would recommend that you do this with a pencil just for a start and then add some ink on after. So you actually draw it on as being cut through the wood, matching those growth rings out as you're growing across the material. What you sometimes may want to consider adding on here as well are some shakes in the wood. So you do get natural stress and strains and as material dries out it can crack, so you may want to think about adding a couple of little shakes in there in the wood, just little cracks running out across it, that can look quite effective on the end grain, you wouldn't really see them down the side grain, those shakes, you don't really see it on the end grain, so it's sometimes worth adding a couple of those on there, just for effect. So, we've got the end grain on there, now from there, so that's how it would look at the end, we notice that the streaks just carry on basically running down the material and they, they do if they hit an object so if there was a branch growing out of this let's just pretend there was a branch growing out of there on the tree what you would find is they would grow around it so they would grow around the knot and that deflects the shape of these streaks of the growth rings running through the tree and it deflects it for all of it so then you would have the shape running out so effectively we're going to copy this kind of pattern onto here. So I am going to do this in pencil, just because it uh, can go wrong. You may sometimes have to rub this out just to make it work. So I'm just going to carry on this line. I'm going to do this one fairly straight, running down. Put a little bit of wave in there. But what you've got to do is track the second line. So the second line's got to match the first line. You will get a little bit of variation in the thickness. And that should always track the first line. Again, I'm just going to copy this one down. It's going to run under the pots. I'm going to try and track this first line here. Now what I might want to think about doing is adding at some point a bit of a knot in there. So this would be quite a nice place for a knot. So if I add in a little Isle up for where a branch would be. I'm going to carry on this line running down. Estimate where we're going. Then I'm going to deflect around that knot. But I might add a little bit more extra growth ring in there that you would see in the branch if you chop through it. And again, I'm going to carry on that down. Carry on running through that to the end. So I would then carry on this pattern all the way across, running across, just tracking the lines. You can throw the other knot in if you want to do. Um, I wouldn't make it too knotty, because what it can then start to do is become distracting. Maybe only put one maximum of two knots in on the whole way down your piece of wood. Now you can do this on your base, you can do this on your animal, you could do it on the pots if you wanted to. But you want at least one part of it where it's got the pattern run down for the wood. And at the end here, I'm just going to bring this one down, because this would actually come on the side of the wood grain running down the edge and I might throw another one in if I wanted to part way around there just for effect. So I'm going to bring that down right on the corner there and then follow the next one again right along to the edge. And once that's complete that will give you the wood grain effect running down. Now once you've done that, once you're happy with your pattern, you can then go over the whole thing in pen and then we're ready to add colour in the next video.